What's up guys, Silo here, and a lot of people have been asking me to do a new UI update guide. I have changed UIs, I'm no longer using LUI, I have switched to Derpy UI. But I've changed it quite a lot from how it originally comes. This UI is a brand new UI, it's only in alpha at the moment. But I've changed it quite a bit, it kind of looks like LUI the way it's set out. But it has a lot of sort of unique features that are to Derp UI only. For example, that 3D model on the escape screen, on your menu screen, it looks pretty cool. And I've, I'm have i using Bartender, I'm using Fortexis, Recount, Omen, Grid, CLC, Rare, Click, Mask. There's a few add-ons that I've added on top of this to just kind of changed it from how it normally is. But it has some nice features, you can minimise the chat box like that, just to get it out of the way if you don't really want it in the way when you're reading or whatever. You can completely close that down. There's a second chat box on the right hand side which I've disabled because I don't need it there. It has very nice sort of scrolling combat text. I do like the scroll uh, scrolling combat text on this UI. It has a lot of customization as well. It's still in alpha but it has a lot you can do with it. I really do like this UI. If you type slash reload or when you first log in as well it does something pretty cool and unique. It might get annoying after a while but whenever you log in it kind of flashes and acts as if it's kind of loading up your UI. Also in the top right it will be saying like logging in silo, welcome to the horde, have like the little horde logo before it loads your map. So there's little features like that that I really like about the UI. Just cool stuff. I like the unit frames as well. Now the unit frames are U uh, OUF but with the derpy UI skin to them. If you type slash PY, that will open the Derpy interface screen, which will give you all the customization for the UI, chat bars, nameplates, navigation, miscellaneous, all the cool stuff that you need. So I'm just going to quickly disable all the add-ons I don't use with this UI, so Forte, Exorcist, Grid, Mask, Omen, Recount, all the stuff that don't originally come with it, although I need OUF, I don't know why I've just disabled that. Where's it going? Put it back on, Silo, come on. You can't do it. You can't do it. There we go. So, get rid of DBM as well. So this is a brand new character. It's not using my Paladin setup. What I'll do is upload, I'll give you a link to the original download if you prefer the original version. And I'll also upload my own version and show you how you'll be able to basically install that. So this is the original version, as I said there'll be a link to this, this isn't customised in any ways whatsoever. So this is how it'll be when you first install it. So as you can see, see it's already got your chat right and left side minimised, you'll have to click on them to get them maximised. It also has this side bar panel as you can see, which can, you can move up and down and just above the, the action bar on the right hand side there'll be three red buttons. Now, those three red buttons will allow you to open your icons, uh, your marking tray, which will allow you to mark targets, your macro bar, or micro bar, which will have your character, your guild screen, your achievements, all the buttons that you need. It'll also have your pet bar. So as you can see, there's the three different bars that you can have open. Now also along the top on the right hand side there's little basically boxes and what you can do with those boxes is put on the time and the date but I think I'll cover that a little bit later on in the video. Also on the right hand side of the map if you click that it'll show your major buffs and if you've got them or not. If you click on the left side of the map it'll give you things to show like repairs and things like that. And you've also got your marking, your raid frames, you can dis, uh, disband a raid through there, you can put down a world marker. So you've got all the things that you need basically. As you can see I'm hovering above the boxes along the top left side. You can click on one of them and set them to certain things like latency, durability, time, things like that. To access the calendar you need to right or left click on the time and that will open up your calendar like that. So next, oh on the right hand side where you've got all the different colours, if you click on a colour it will open a specific like slash, so it will be like slash say is white, slash guild is green I think, slash yell is red, so if you click one of them it will pop them up 
but you can disable that and turn it off and it basically you can do whatever you want with this UI. As I said, it has a lot of customization. So we're going to type slash PY, we're going to go to miscellaneous and you'll have various options here that you'll be able to change. Now this layout offset, if you change this, for example, if you make it higher, a higher number, these black bars that you see on the top and bottom will get bigger. So if you like the kind of movie feeling to wow, like the, the black bars, then you can make them bigger and it will give you sort of a more zoomed in. And if you don't like the black bars at all, then set that to zero and that will completely get rid of the black bars. And I like having them on a little bit, but not nowhere near as how big they are on default. So there it is without the black bars, so it's completely up to you. Now the top panel looks kind of strange without the black bars there, there's just kind of buttons floating. That's why I prefer having the black bars. You can also, in under miscellaneous, you have these tweak buttons. Now you can turn off certain things like the loot one and loot roll and things like that. So for example, if we go and loot a mob, I'll show you the default sort of loot screen. Now, I really don't like the default loot screen, so I disabled it, and I'll probably use my own at some point, but at the moment I'm just using basic default. So as you can see, that's the loot screen. I really don't like it, but some people do. But if you type slash PY, and then go to miscellaneous, and the red, uh, the blue box to red on the loot screen and reload your UI. When we kill something again now, it should set it back to default. And you'll have the original WoW loot screen. Now you'll need to do that as well if you install your own loot, your loot table thing. So don't forget that. You'll have to disable that bit. Now th this reset settings is for if you mess up any of the settings you'll be able to click on one of them and reload and it will reset the settings back to default. So that's useful if you've messed up the UI a little bit. Okay next up we're going to look at the action bars. Now the action bars have a lot of customization as well. As soon as we get onto that bit. There we go. So. On the top you have action bar layout, it says 1 times 20 if you put it to 2 times 20 it will give you 2 20 bars, you can go for 3 times 14 bars, you can go for 3 times 20 bars, 1 times 20 bars, there's a lot of customization, you can also change the cooldown point where it'll have the how long left on the certain ability, you can put it in the middle, the top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left. And if you set it to a certain amount of bars and reload the UI, it will move your chat boxes as well. As you can see, it's rescaled my chat box now to be the same size as the action bars. You can actually disable it from doing that, which I'll get to in a little bit. But yeah, there you go. There's a lot of customization for the bars as well, so you can have a lot more bars if you need them, or a lot less bars if you don't need them. So next up is the chat. Now you're able in here to change how wide and small the chat boxes are and also how wide and small these boxes next to the chat boxes are. You have kind of like the chat box and kind of like a spare box to put recount or omen or whatever you want in. Or on. It doesn't really go in it, it just goes on it. So, for example, if we increase the size or decrease the size and then reload the UI, the problem is with the UI at the moment is everything that you do, you need to reload. So as soon as you change a setting, you need to reload the UI and then it'll show you the effect. So if you're trying to get a specific size, it's going to take you a while because you're going to have to change it, reload, see how far or shorter it needs to be, and then reload again until you get the, the right size. But as you can see, I'm changing the size now, and these boxes kind of give you a rough idea of where, where it's going to be. You can also change the default max and minimum size. So you can make the chat boxes short in default or tiny. It's up to you. So as you can see, we've made them really small now. And there's also an option in the chat to disable it from resizing with your action bars. I think that's one of the things I've just disabled. Okay, in this one, the chat bar, if you disable all these buttons I'm doing now, it will get rid of the bar on your second chat bar, on the one to the right. So where it had the different colors, that will now be removed, as you can see. And also, if you click on your chat box, um, it's very kind of hard to click at the moment, it's strange, but on the far right side of your chat box there's a little box that says none or off. 
And you can set that to none or off and it'll minimize it and get rid of it completely, which is cool. That's why I have mine on, so it's completely gone. So next up, we're going to go PY again, and we're going to head to the nameplates. Now, nameplates is pretty cool. You can set it to get rid of certain things. Like if you're a PVP, you can set, uh, set it to get rid of vipers. Because an annoying thing is when a hunter pops vipers, there's just nameplates everywhere. All the nameplates. So you can set it to ignore them, and you'll just see the hunter instead of like a million nameplates everywhere. And you can set it to get rid of certain totems and things, so it's pretty cool. As I said, this, even though it's in alpha, this UI has a lot of customization for a UI that's this new. Then we've got navigation, so you can change the things around the map. You can put buffs that are next to the map and things like that. You can set it to have a certain amount of buffs or debuffs and all that stuff. So they'll appear to the left of your map. And then finally we have nameplates or unit frames are. Oh not finally, this is just next. So the nameplates uh, unit frames, so you have a lot of customization as well. You can change the player frame, you can change the target frame, the focus frame, the target focus frame, or the focus of target frame, one of the two. You've got target of target, you can change the cast bar, the way that works, the way the combo points work, buffs and debuffs. So it's kind of integrated your OUF settings into the Derp UI interface, which is pretty nice as well. You don't have to go into separate places to change certain things, it's just all in one place. So there's camera target, you've got your targets cast bar, your targets buffs, debuffs, your focus. And finally, we've got combat text. So we've cut the combat text. If you set it to scrolling, there's an option for turn on scrolling or something. Uh, what that will allow you to do is put your hover your mouse over where the, the text would actually scroll, and you can scroll your mouse wheel up or down, and you can see like if you want to see a specific hit or you want to see a specific heal that you've done, you can sort of like scroll through there. If you go to the bottom one, just under combat text, it'll allow you to move certain frames. So if you want your target to be in the middle of your screen, your extra action button in the middle of your screen, your focus to the left, you can do that very easily. And then just click lock again and it'll lock them in place. Now you can do focus by doing slash focus when you've got someone targeted or if you target someone, on the right hand side of their frame will be a focus button. Just click the focus button and it'll focus them. And then to remove the focus, you can just click the little X button on the focus screen. So there you have it. That's the basic UI. So it, hopefully I've covered everything. The only thing I've not covered is how to set keybinds. To do them, you need to do slash KH. And then that'll open the keybinds uh, interface. So now I'm going to show you how to basically install my version of the UI. So there'll be a file for you to download which will contain an interface folder and a WTF folder. You'll have to go to your World of Warcraft folder and delete your interface and what the fuck from uh, WTF from there. Or you can just copy and paste them to a safe place. And just in case you don't like the UI you can revert back to them. But your interface and WTF needs to be completely removed from your World of Warcraft folder. Just your interface and your WTF though. As I said, if there's add-ons that you want to keep or whatever, just copy and paste your interface and WTF to your documents or your desktop, just to a safe place and then remove them, just in case you want to back up. So with them gone, you'd highlight your interface and WTF and delete them. I'm not going to delete them, obviously, because I don't need to. And then you don't need to do anything with your interface folder, but you will with your WTF. Your interface folder will have all your add-ons in it. So if we go to the WTF, which I'll do in a second. Remember, this is just for my version. Um, this is also for the normal version as well, actually. Um, you'll do the same kind of thing, but you won't need to do this part. You won't need to go into your account. Uh, you won't need to go into your WTF. Go to account, and under the account, it'll have name. Rename that folder that's called name to your account name. So mine's Dale nine three zero seven. So you rename it to that. Click into the that folder and you'll have a realm list folder. Rename the realm list folder to the name of your realm. So mine would be rune totem. 
and then save that. So now we've got a folder called Rune Totem. Now, if you want to copy and paste the UI to another character, you just copy the Realm folder, rename it to the New Realm, and inside that you'll have the character one. So inside your Realm folder, you'll have a folder called Character. Rename the Character folder to your the name of your character. So mine's going to be I Kill Peeps. There you go. So remember, this is only for if you install in my version of the UI, not the original. You'll only need to do the WTF and interface copy and paste bit for the original. So we're going to make a, a character called I Kill Eyes Kills Peeps. And we'll make it an undead, why not? And a rogue, because they're more good at killing peeps. And we're going to load up that character. So there we go. Now we're in, and the UI looks a bit crazy, it looks not that great, but we do need to spend a few minutes, or about a minute, of just setting it up. So if you type slash, actually if you go to your, press escape, actually no, if you do slash um, bar, to, or B-A-R, B -A -R, and then go to profiles and set it to default, then that will set up your bars, you'll have two in the middle, and you'll have one on the right hand side which is hidden. If you want to show the key binds, then go to bar 1 and untick hide hotkey, go to bar 2 and untick hide hotkey, blah blah blah. And then you can also unlock and lock them if you want and move them around. Next we're going to do grids, type slash grid, go to profiles and set it to Scylla, and that will set up your grid. Next we're going to press escape, go to interface, go to add-ons, we're going to go to recount, profiles, and we're going to set it to Scylla Stormscale, and that will set your recount up. We're also going to go to Omen and go to Profiles and set that to Silo dash Dom Scale. Next, we're going to go to Click. Now, the way Click works is when you click on your grid, left click it'll heal, right click will use Bubble, whatever. Now, if you don't want it to do that with all your other frames, you want to go to the Frame Blacklist and put a tick in every box apart from the ones that have grid. So, leave the grid ones blank and put a tick in all the other boxes. So, that means when you set up Click, which is in your spell book, if you set up a heal, it'll only use the heal when you click on grid, not on your normal frames. Next, we're going to do slash recount, or you can click on the cog on your recount. If you click on the cog and then go to the window and then unlock, or take the tick out of the lock window, we're going to move it just to the right of the grid and lock it in place. And there you go, the UI is now pretty much set up. That's exactly the way I use it. You've got your bars, you've got your settings. That's everything completely set up. If you have any questions, because I've probably missed something out on this, then just send me a message on the video or in my inbox, and I'll get back to you at some point. But all the settings I've got are the way that they would be on my live account. So, I hope this guide helped you out. Look out for more guides coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya!